Okay, our ingredients are, and as far as measurements, there are no real measurements. You're going to have to kind of eyeball this and feel the texture of it. But generally, for a whole head of lettuce, I will use about, oh, anywhere from a third to a half of a jar of mayonnaise. It needs to be creamy. I may have to go back later and add a little bit more. Better to add a little more than have too much and you can't take it out. But I put this in and start blending it slowly with the vegetables that are in the bowl. I use a large wooden spoon for this, but it doesn't have to be a wooden spoon. It can be any kind of a spoon. Alright, once you get it started mixing a little bit, you'll find it kind of clumps up in there a little bit. That's okay. It's going to do that. You're going to need to add a little bit of salt, some pepper, and now we're going to add just a wee bit of lemon juice, which will help spread out that mayonnaise. I put in about maybe a tablespoonful. This is just to help start liquefying things. It's going to take a few minutes of turning. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you a little break here while I finish mixing this. It'll just take a few minutes. Okay, as you can see now it's fairly well blended. Now it's time to add some sugar. Uh, I haven't tried tasting this, so I don't know about where it is, but I'm going to start off with approximately a cup of sugar and start blending again. I will blend the sugar again until it's pretty well mixed in. You're going to find a few lumps of your sugar sometimes because it clumps up on you a little bit. That's all right. Just go ahead and mix it in. It'll take a few minutes. Okay, as you mix, you're going to find that it starts to feel a little gritty as you're mixing it. That's the sugar that you just added. Now we're going to add a little apple cider vinegar. I add about a quarter of a cup maybe. About a quarter of a cup for one whole head of lettuce or cabbage. Uh, sometimes I have to add more. That's alright. We can always add more. Try to add it in small increments so that you don't overdo it. And as you mix, you will feel the texture of it and see the creaminess appear. And right now, I don't see where I have quite enough mayonnaise in it. So I'm going to add a little bit more mayo. You get used to doing this after a while, and it's it's a lot simpler than it looks, but you want to have that kind of a creaminess in it all through your coleslaw. Now, as you add more mayonnaise, okay, you will probably have to add a little bit more vinegar. Try to stay away from using too much lemon juice, although you can use lemon juice in place of vinegar if you have to, but remember it's going to add a lot more tang to it in a citrusy way. Uh, I don't mind. I like a citrusy flavored coleslaw, so it's fine with me. But some people don't care for that that much. Alright, as you continue to... Okay, after you've mixed for a while, you'll see how it begins to look. I had to add just a little bit more vinegar because I wasn't getting quite enough creaminess, but now I'm about where I want to be. You can see it pool at the bottom as you scoop it away. And that's kind of where you want to be. Uh, it wasn't quite tangy enough, so I added a little bit more vinegar, about maybe a tablespoonful or two. And like I say, this is kind of a taste-as-you-go sort of thing to get it to the flavor that you want. You're going to be altering the flavor later on with fruit anyway, but the idea is to get the initial initial taste of it proper. Right now it's tasting pretty good. 
a little sweet. It's all right, but I'm going to add a little bit more salt. I don't taste enough of the salt in there. You have to kind of be careful at this stage. Okay, that tastes pretty good. Now, I'm going to use a spatula. And the reason is because all this stuff that's gathered up along the edges here, I want to reincorporate into the mix. And a spatula will scrape the side of the bowl better. And I can still do it this way a little bit here and turn it over and mix a little bit better so that it does get mixed in and gets soaked into the juices. Now I kind of try and get it down. I've got it all mixed. The hard part is over. I just kind of like to lay it down, flatten it off a little bit, and I'm going to set it aside. And I'll be right back with the rest of the tree. Now then, here is one of my great trade secrets is the fruit that goes into my coleslaw. Most people think fruit and things like vegetables and whatnot do not go together well. They are so wrong. What I do is I take an orange. In this case I'm using a Florida orange. It can be any kind of orange you want. Naval orange, Valencia, California orange, it doesn't really matter. But I start by cutting off the end pieces so that I can get a relatively decent sized slice out of the middle. Now this one here has quite a few seeds in it. I'm going to de-seed it before I put it in my coleslaw. But I'm slicing several nice full slices and as it starts to get down to the thin areas here, I'm probably not going to get any more than four. It doesn't really matter too much, but this is a rather small orange for me. I prefer a much larger orange. But I am deseeding this one, and I'm going to use as much as I can of it. Uh, I may end up having to open another orange just to get enough of the juice because this one, as juicy as it seems, it isn't a very large orange. And I go through here and pull out the seeds because I don't really like swallowing seeds. They won't really hurt you, but it's just something I prefer not to do. So I try to get as many of the seeds out as I can. And let me pause while I go ahead and de-seed the rest of this and then I'll be back to show you the rest of the routine. Okay, I've de-seeded my orange and now I'm going to take those end pieces that I cut off and I'm going to squirt the juice which, this is a pretty juicy orange, so I may not need to open a second orange. But I get as much juice out of there as I can and drip it into the mix. This gives it that orangey, juicy flavor. And then I take like four pieces, enough to cover the bowl top reasonably well. And I include those right on the top of it. And now it needs to set and ferment. Your best bet is to let this set for at least 24 hours before eating. It allows all of the flavors to combine and genuinely inherit each other's flavors. 
I then take a little bit of aluminum foil. I cover the top. And let it sit in the refrigerator for a couple of days, a day, 24 hours is sufficient. You can actually eat it sooner than that, but it does taste much better after 24 hours. And I kind of seal it in with the aluminum foil. And now I'm going to refrigerate it for, oh, the better part of a day. And when I get done, I will have excellent coleslaw, dessert-style coleslaw. Coleslaw that people will rave about and won't believe that you made. It's very simple, very little measuring to do. Uh, in fact, almost none. You just kind of guess at it. You just throw it together, and it works. Very easy, and it tastes great. Thank you. Enjoy.